Hi Gemini viewers, so sorry for the delay. Okay. So today I'm going to be looking into what your person is feeling, what they're thinking, and what action they might be taking towards you over the next, um, I'd say like the next week or two. Depends on how the energy plays out. Alright, let's get into the reading. So to start with, let me just... All right, what are the, the Gemini's that are watching this video? What do you guys need to know about your situation, your love life? What do you need to know just in general right now? What do you, what's the general guidance here? Okay, we're going to take those seven and see what happens. Okay. The six of wands reversed. Actually, I don't think that meant to be reversed. I think I just accidentally turned my cards all over <laughs> eight of wands knight of pentacles the hermit the king of cups the king of pentacles okay that's interesting so possibly two love offers here the ace of cups and then the knight of pentacles and the two of cups okay Actually, intuitively reading this, I think that the Hermit was the one card that was meant to be reversed because I'm just looking at it and it doesn't, I don't feel Hermit energy when I look at this. I don't feel like, I mean, there might be a little bit of that. I know with the coronavirus, everyone kind of has to quarantine right now, but I, I just feel like you're coming out of this energy and I'm really drawn to see how she's looking over here at the Eight of Wands. It's like her passion and vitality and this forward movement that's kind of getting her out of this hermit energy. So I'm, I'm going to reverse that, actually, because that feels right to me for this particular group. I'm using a lot of sage right now for some reason, and I don't usually use quite this much for my reads. So I think that might be a message for some of you that it is time to, to cleanse your space, to cleanse yourself. Might be time to do some uncrossing work. Um, and just, just make sure your environment is, is clear because there's a lot of heavy energy out there right now. So I feel like a lot of us, a lot of the empaths out there really need to sage more than they usually would um, because of everything going on outside. So I think this spread is really about you and the steps that you've taken to get out of isolation and better your situation and get out of this, this loneliness. I do think that you were in the hermit phase, but I think that you... You have been coming out of it. I think over the months, you're going to be coming out of that phase more and more. Um, I do think that when things go back to, you know, to a stable point with the coronavirus, I do see you going out and being social um, more than you were before the virus. So I, I do see you meeting new people, making new friends, um, going out and just living your life more. And with the... With the Eight of Wands here, it's like you you kind of, you understood that you needed to take action, that you couldn't just live in your head, you couldn't just delay things, you know, and, and so this is someone who's a very powerful manifester, possibly into witchcraft, energy work, um, it's, it's that kind of energy, it's like you knew that you had to take action to better your life, you know, whether this is affirmations or vision boards or whatever it might be, you, um, you know, you understood that you couldn't just sit around and wait for life to happen or wait for the loneliness to go away. And you've been actively, you know, trying to make new and better friends and trying to, you know, meet people and trying to get out of your comfort zone. Um, and, your, you know, your guides are encouraging you for that. They're, well, they're encouraging you to do that more and they're also um, rewarding you for that energy. They're, they're letting you know that that energy has been recognized and it is manifesting um the kind of things that you want in your life. And I feel like you're someone who did a lot of manifesting over a period of time. I feel like there was a period of isolation for you where you were just manifesting, 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 you know, love, money, abundance, whatever it was that you wanted. And um, I feel like it's coming all flooding in at once almost because it's like, it's like you're just getting out of this hermit energy. You're just getting out of this, this period of time where you were, you know, working on the manifestations and all of a sudden you have these two different people coming in, you know, coming, charging in. So your, your guides with the Eight of Wands, the first two cards, the Eight of Wands and the, um, the Knight of Pentacles, it's just saying that you are now in a phase where you're being rewarded 
for that passion and that courage and the pers perseverance, the, um, you know, just, just that energy that you had, the inspiration, the action that you took, you know, you didn't just sit around and wait. You were really doing whatever you could to manifest the life that you wanted, even though you were in this period of isolation, I feel to some degree, um, you still had a lot of faith and you, you still, you still, um, you're getting out of this hermit energy. So, so yeah, with the eight of wands, it's like you put all that energy into it, um, into yourself, into what you wanted. And the nine of pentacles is saying that, you know, that's, that's reward after hard work. It's, it's the harvest finally. It's, it's, you know, completion. It's, you've, you know, you, you manifested, you manifested love. You've been manifesting love. Like it's, it's here, all the, whatever energy work, whatever it was that you were doing, um, you took action in the physical world is just what I'm feeling, basically. You didn't really just sit and wait for life to happen. And again, taking action doesn't necessarily mean you're going out and doing stuff. It could just mean you're doing witchcraft or you're doing energy work or you're trying to, you know, keep up with the affirmations or you're really doing um, the healing work that you needed to do. It's whatever it is. It's just saying with the Nine of Pentacles, you know, that phase is over. Like you've done that. You've done the manifesting and what you've manifested is now here and you're now getting out of this isolation and this loneliness and this period that you were in and you've got these two different love offers coming in, um, which I might have to clarify because that is interesting. <laughs> With this um, Ace of Cups here, I kind of feel you being in this phase. Like, you, you see how she see how she looks? She's kind of, she's sort of seductive. It's like she's not even looking at either of these men. Like, she wants them to chase her. She's not really chasing anyone. She's just kind of doing herself. Um, and she's very, like, this is, this is a time, this is a dirt, the time that's coming up over the next few months. You're going to be more attractive Um to the opposite sex or I guess the same sex if you if you're dating the same sex but you're you're going to you're getting into this phase where, where you're more attractive to the um the people that you want to date you're kind of in this almost like an empress energy where you're just very um very beautiful and very desirable and people are, are finally starting to see that maybe you've done beauty spells and, and glamour and that kind of stuff and it's um it's coming off people are people are noticing it I also feel like, I kind of feel like this energy is also going to motivate you too because you're going to have love finally and it's going to come out of nowhere. You're going to be, I feel like you're mostly alone right now and then out of nowhere you're going to have all these potential partners around you. And I feel like it's going to, like maybe things have been stagnant a little bit and so it's kind of going to give you this new burst of energy where... You might be more creative. You might be more focused on new projects. You're just going to have this new confidence because you're going to see that these people are finally like noticing you and pursuing you. And you're going to see that you're finally, you know, getting out of this isolation and getting out of the loneliness and finally meeting the right people. And it's, it's just going to get things flowing for you, I feel. With the, the King of Cups and the King of Pentacles, I want to see what I can get. I get like a lot of pain when I look at the King of Cups. Like, I get some, like, sadness from him. So this could be an ex. This could just be, this could be someone with a complicated history with you. Um, I feel like these are two choices that you have coming in. And I think these are two potential, I think they're at least two soulmates, maybe a twin flame. But I feel like at the very least, it's two soulmate bonds. Possibly even um, one or both of them are, are life partners as well. So you have a big decision coming up with these people. I kind of feel like I feel like one of these kings is stable and grounded. Um, maybe a business owner or someone who's entrepreneur, something to do with business. I feel with the King of Pentacles, it's someone. It's definitely not. They might not. I just sense financial stability with them. Or I feel like maybe unless they got laid off recently, but I, I just with the King of um, Pentacles here, I just I feel this sense that they would never ask you for money. Like they're not that type of person. I, I feel the financial stability with them. I feel like they're they're very they're just very they just have a very stable, grounded energy. But you have more passion and more love with the King of Cups. It's like it's more of an emotional connection. Um, but it's almost. It's like the passion is there, but it's almost like a toxic kind of passion. Like it's not, it's like a codependent relationship is kind of how it feels. Where it's like maybe you guys were hot and cold with each other in the past. Like it doesn't really, 
it feels like there's a history there. Um, so the passion and the lust and the chemistry is there with this King of Cups, but it's it's not. It's too it's too hot and cold. It's too in and out. Um, there could be some commitment issues or something on this masculine's part as well. Or they could just be very, I feel like maybe some of them have a temper, like maybe they're just very hot-headed, very stubborn and set in their ways. So it's like you guys miscommunicate and they're really quick to storm off and say, screw it, you know, like they're really quick to just, it's like you guys fight and then you have like the, the great makeup sex and then a couple days later you're fighting again, you know, it's that kind of energy. So I feel like your ex is most likely coming back first. And then this person might already be watching you and they might be like, oh shit, like this you know, this, this man might, might sweep this woman up and he doesn't want that. And again, it's however the energy plays out. So if you're a man watching this video and you're, you're, you know, um, just however it plays out, it, it's not, when I say male, female, you know, this, this can be female energy. It doesn't, it's, it's whatever it, however it resonates with you. So, so keep that in mind and the roles can also be reversed. So it's just, it's, it's what applies to you. You'll, you'll know what your story is. You'll understand it. Um, so yeah, so I feel like this King of Pentacles is going to like kind of step in. He's going to step up more when he sees this man coming back because he's going to get jealous and he's not really going to want to lose you. Um, and this could be astral too. He might, it might just be someone that's kind of admiring you and they just feel this energy that you could have, you know, that you're, you're getting into this Ace of Cups energy where you're just manifesting the love you want and you can have pretty much anyone you want. And so they might, you know. They, they recognize that they're going to you're going to have a lot of different people coming to you is what I feel. And again, the, the king of pentacles is a more stable option, but the the passion is just not there. The passion is kind of lacking. And so it's really you have to sit and think about whether that passion can be built on. Can you I mean, can you build passion? Can you. Um, can you. Can you see the good in this person? You know what I mean? Like, can you can you fall in love with this person? Can you get out of your familiar patterns or your comfort zone? Um, can you let go of familiarity and go with somebody who's more stable and more likely to stay um, in the long run? You know, more likely to stick it out with you. I'm actually really drawn to, I was just watching Love is Blind. And the, I'm getting like a vision here of like that, this, the, one of the last scenes that I saw, um, is popping up, so I don't want to give you guys spoilers in case in case you haven't seen it. But there was there was one particular couple that was just so stable, and and everyone I was so sure that they that they were going to um well okay so for those of you that don't know what that show is about, basically these people um hold on one second. Uh, fall in love with each other without ever seeing the other person's face. They're just in these little pods and they talk and they go on dates for about a week or two and then they choose the person that they want to propose to and if they say yes, then they have a month until the wedding and, and so that's what this reality show is about and then at the end of it, um, you know, they decide whether they're going to marry the person or not and they decide right on the altar and there was this couple that I was so sure was going to get married because they were so stable. Their families loved each other. They... You know, she had this amazing, loving, loyal, kind guy, and she ended up saying no because she felt like, like the physical attraction or like the the passion, that love, just wasn't quite there enough. And and she looked back on it. They did like a review later, and you could kind of tell that she regretted not um, giving it a chance because she recognized that she had these patterns where. She would reject the nice guys. She would reject the good guys. She would, she, if something really good, if there was a good man in her life, she would think it was just too good to be true. She wouldn't really trust it. Um, and, and she just kind of had this energy of just always wanting what she couldn't have and just having this energy of being, you know, addicted to the drama, to the familiarity, to the patterns, to the, the hot and cold, passionate kind of relationship. Um, and so it was a struggle for her, I think, to, to fall in love with someone who is so different from her usual pattern um, and so stable. And there was just there was no problems. There was no drama. There was no fights. And it was like she didn't trust it. She's like, why is it this perfect? Why is it so normal? Like, why 
is this, this is it. Like we just, we have normal conversations. We go on dates. We, we're not going to fight. We're not going to try to kill each other all the time. Like what's going on? It's like, she didn't, she wasn't used to having that kind of stability. And that, that's it's very similar, not to get to off point, but it's very similar to this energy I feel where it's like, you got the past and then you have this very stable, supportive man. But I guess it's ultimately, a, you know, dependent on, because you do need passion in a relationship. Like you do need that passion and that, that sexual connection and that um, emotion there. Like you do need both those energies to merge, you know what I mean? You can't have one without the other. And so it kind of sucks in a way for you guys because it's like you have these two people coming in, but they're both very unbalanced. It's like one of them is like way too distant. One of them is like you don't have the, you don't feel the passion with yet. So it's, it's really up to you. Like can you step out of your comfort zone? Can you fall in love with somebody on a soul level? Can you get to know this King of Pentacles and, you know, develop this soul-based passion, not like a lust, like with the King of Cups, it's kind of almost like a lusty type connection. Um, but with the King of Pentacles, it's like, can you develop this, this soul-based passion and romance and, and love and connection? Like, can you get to know them on a soul level, even though they're not your usual type or they're, you know, too stable for you, you think, or whatever it is, you know, can you actually just get to know their personality and fall in love with that and um, develop a, a deeper, passionate, sexual, romantic connection from there. You know, can you kind of be friends first and, and ease into that tradition? So ease in the, into that transition. So, so yeah, it's, it's really ultimately up to you. And whoever you decide to choose, you have this Knight of Pentacles. So it's going to be someone who's, you know, this is about, you know, seeking the truth. This is being responsible, taking responsibility, and maybe offering an apology for your past behavior. This is, you know, trying to be a better partner for somebody. This is, you know, this is like this determination. This person is coming in with their, you see what they've got there. They're just, they're charging ahead. Um, and it's like they're trying to be reliable and, and, and trustworthy and just persevere. So I feel like, and I feel like this is the energy with both men. I feel like they're both going to be giving you some kind of love offer and they're going to be, it's like a peacock strutting their feathers in front of you, basically. You're going to have the peacocks all around you that you're going to have to choose from. <laughs> um, so, yeah, the, these people are, are coming forward, and they're they're trying to be as honest and, and loyal and reliable as they can. But it's up to you to, to really get to know each person and, and figure out who's the most genuine. But I do see you making a choice between the two, so you do have, um, you know, a commitment here. You do have a, a partnership here. In, in the end of it, you know, once you've made that decision. But again, one of them might not be so stable. You have a relationship. Yes, I think so. But will it be a stable relationship that I'm not so sure about? So it's it's really you got to you got to get to know these people. You got to really look at the pros and cons, listen to the great green flags. And as well as the red flags, too. And you just you have to be um, balanced. You really have to be balanced to make this decision. And let me see. So, hmm, what do I want to do here? I'm going to put these two cards back. I don't really need those out anymore. All right, can you clarify the King of Cups for me? Can you give me some clarity on what this situation was? Okay. Two of Wands. Okay. Hmm. Seven of Swords, Page of Pentacles, Knight of Pentacles, okay. So I think this is really just referring to this this King of Cups, his is um just what we said about you know him coming in. So again, I feel I feel history here. I feel like an ex, but not not a stable connection again, but I do feel that energy. Um with the two of wands, it's kind of like this person, like maybe you or him, um, or, or her, whatever, if you're, you know, whatever, however it resonates, um, you're like, you're looking at this skull here, you see there's all this passion and this fire that just kind of killed this relationship that was just, it's not, I, maybe passion is probably the wrong word to use because passion is a good thing, I feel. This is more like, it's just arguments, it's just codependency, it's just not a great energy. 
Um, it's just, and it's like this cloudiness here you see too. Um, what is she doing in this? So it's really interesting. She's using this green energy to try to bring this skull back to life. So it's kind of like someone's like looking at the skull and contemplating and wondering if this, you know, connection is dead, if it's over, or if it's too toxic. But it's like part of them is has this little, I don't know if you can even see it. It's like they have this this green energy coming out of out of their hand right here. Um Sorry, I'll get a better webcam in the near future. But they have this little, this green energy coming coming out of their hand to try to, you know, revive the situation. But they're still not sure if it's really, if it's going to be revived or not. It might just be dead. And with the Seven of Swords reversed, um, I feel like this is someone who they probably had commitment issues. And probably, because again, I get the temper. I, could, I get that they were very hot-headed. They were very quick to... To just misunderstand you and just kind of be committed to misunderstanding you. It's like you guys would like not communicate well and then they would just say, they would just, you know, they would just throw their hands up and say screw it and they would just run away and they would try to escape and they might have had some, I almost feel like some devil energy here where like maybe toxic addictions and toxic patterns where they would, you know, they were just like screw it, I'm done, I'm not, um, just, just a lot of pride and ego. And with the Seven of Swords reversed, though, I feel like they're trying to make sure that they don't do that again because they do have that temper and they don't want to do that. Um, so they are feeling optimistic about this connection with the Page of Pentacles. You know, they are trying to see it's kind of similar energy to the um, what was that card that I just had? The Two of Wands, where it's like she's really, you know, you see these two cards, it's like, see, like they're both looking at this energy like with the two of wands it's like they're kind of wondering if it's dead but then we have the page of um pentacles here so it's like they are feeling hopeful and they do feel like they can manifest this and revive this and they do feel like there's still hope for this connection um and with the knight of pentacles you know they, they know that they need to be truthful and honest and probably offer an apology and maybe even a commitment and um They just, hmm. I mean, I sense uncertainty, but I sense them, they're very, this is like a very serious energy in this read. When I look at this card, it's like they know not to play around with this. They are coming in, but again, I still feel some instability, so, hmm. All right, so we know what the King of Cups is doing. What is we know what he's you know he's feeling. We know what he's missing you. He's he's wanting a second chance with you. He's um, you're kind of comfortable to him too. I feel like it's very familiar with you, and so it's that like that familiar connection. It's kind of like almost like when he's around other people, they just there are certain things about him that that. They just don't understand. It's almost like a motherly energy that you give off to him. It's really, it's kind of strange. It's like, it's like you know how to comfort him. Like as codependent as the relationship was, it's like you you know, there are certain triggers and fears that he has, and I feel like you know what those are, and I feel like you know how to comfort him, and you just have this kind of understanding with him that a lot of people don't have, and so he does really miss that. But let's see, how is this actually going to like go? Is like what's if you go back with this King of Cups, how is that going to go for you? Okay, I'm going to take those ones. Knight of Cups. So this is... This is you and also them, I think, opening your heart again to this love. It's like you're, you're vulnerable. You're in this really emotional, vulnerable space, or you're coming into it at least. Um... And offering your heart again, this is like nostalgia and emotion. It's like you're trying to go forward. Um, and then we have the Six of Cups here. I'm trying to see what else, what else do we have. So i got to see how they all play out together. Four of Wands. Eight of Cups. Four of Wands reversed, actually. And Eight of Cups. Nine of Wands. Hmm. So what I feel is that this person is going to come back and you guys are going to end up at a crossroads. I don't feel like, I do feel like they're going to come back with an apology. Um, and I do feel like they're going to come back pretty strong. 
but I don't see that energy lasting completely. I feel like you guys are going to go back to old patterns, but you're both going to start trying to really making this effort to communicate better. And I do see you guys probably getting back together and then being at this crossroads where it's where you, you have to make this decision. Do you guys want to just end this for good and have closure? Or do you want to, do you want to keep this doing, going and really maybe go to couples counseling or, or whatever it is you need to do the work to make this relationship work? Cause there are a lot of communication issues here. I feel, um, so now looking at all the cards together, like the Six of Cups, this is, you know, nostalgia. This person is just kind of, you see her? She's just thinking about the past. She's a little, this is very sad energy. It's a very, like, bittersweet kind of love story, I feel. And, um, yeah, she's looking at the past, and she's longing for that, and she's opening her heart to it again. But with the Four of Wands reversed, it's kind of like, this wasn't almost like she's it's just making it out in her head to be better than it really was i feel um with the four of wands reversed it's kind of like like the upright is like peace and it's like a stable sweet loving environment and it's so there's like kind of this this nostalgia and this passion and this this open-heartedness that comes in with this love but then you kind of got you guys kind of go back to like like it's it's not as sweet and as good and as pure as as it it felt like it was it's like absence makes the heart grow fonder kind of energy here um where it's it's not the sweetest environment and you know one person is kind of having this urge to this is probably you it's like you have this urge to like leave and create a new life like you know that this energy does not work for you anymore um and so with the eight of cups it's kind of like you're you're looking back at this person and you're saying are you coming with me or are you staying in the same energy are you going to keep, do you want to keep going in circles and miscommunicating and you want to keep being the same person you've always been? Or do you want to come with me and really, you know, step up and change your life and be the kind of person, you know, I need you to be for this relationship and, um, and have this, this new love and this new commitment with me. It's like, you're just looking back and you're kind of, it's like, you're, you're, you're waiting, but you're not waiting. You see how, how grounded she is. It's like she's not really worried about it. She's just kind of looking at him like, are you coming or not? Like, I'm not. I might wait another couple weeks or month or that's about it, though. After that, I'm, I'm walking on without you, you know. Um, and so, yeah, I, I do I do see them coming back. I do see it being a strong commitment. But like I said, I do see you guys getting to a crossroads where it's like the same shit as before. And then you're going to make that decision where you're like, okay, maybe like an ultimatum almost. You might have to give them an ultimatum. Where you're like, all right, you better drastically change. This relationship has to drastically change or I'm going on without you. It's like, you know, you come in or not kind of energy. And with the Nine of Wands, you have success in whatever path you choose. So if you choose to cut and clear this relationship and just let it be dead and over and get closure with this person, you will be successful. It's going to be it's going to be a battle no matter what you do is what I think the Nine of Wands is trying to say here. It's... um. See how serious she is, too? She's like, she's done with this shit. She's not playing around anymore, and she's got this fiery kind of energy about her, too, and she's got her wand, and she's, you know, again, this is a very powerful manifester. This is this is someone who knows who they are and what they want, and um, with this, this fiery, serious Nine of Wands energy, it's like she's she's just not playing anymore, and so it's, it's saying basically there are going to be obstacles no matter what path you choose so you have two crossroads coming up really you have the first crossroad which is choosing between these two people and you know you're going to be in this seductive energy where you're going to be drawing in all these potential you know soulmates and life partners um so your first op you, know, you know your first obstacle is or your first sorry your first your first crossroad is choosing between these two people and um you know and this is showing you what your path would be if you chose this king of cups energy and, and so, yes, they'll, they'll come back, and I feel like you'll have, you'll be in the honeymoon phase for a bit, and then the relationship will kind of go back to what it used to be before um, to some degree, and then you're going to be in this Eight of Cups energy where you're like, okay, so either this drastically changes and we get, you know, couples counseling, or we, um, you, you know, cut the karmic partner out for good, or you do this or that, or it's like, it's not, it's like ultimatum energy. It's like, I'm not, you know, not doing it anymore. Like, you can... 
you can catch up and be by my side or you can just let me go. But we're not going to stay stuck in limbo forever, not doing this to yourself anymore. Um, and, and so, yeah, the Nine of Wands is basically just telling you that you have, and she looks pissed too. Look at her. She's not happy about this situation. Um, the Nine of Wands is telling you that you have success, whatever you choose. It's going to be hard either way when this crossroads comes about because you're going to have to make a really serious, important life decision. Um, and I do see it being heavily emotional because um, it's like if you guys do choose to work this out, it's like it's going to be, I think, years of work um, learning how to communicate with each other and learning how to get past the, the patterns and the um, communication issues and the, the stubbornness and the pride and the ego and the fear and, and just working through, there's a lot in this relationship that would have to be healed. And it would be a lot of work, you know, to get you guys to, to you know, gain trust again on both ends. I feel like you guys both betrayed each other in some ways, or at least they feel like you betrayed them, even if you didn't. They feel that way is what I feel from this group. Um... And they're kind of stubborn, so they're like, oh, well, she did this and this and this. Like, I can hear them, I can feel them saying that. Like, oh, she did this and this and this. And it's like, okay, well, you did this other shit, too. So, it's not, you guys are both, <laughs> both guilty or both innocent, I guess. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it's, if you chose, if you choose them, it's, it's, it's a struggle. It, it really is a struggle to communicate and to, to gain trust again and to learn about each other and to, to start this relationship over. And there's never any guarantee that even if you do that, that it's going to work. But um, with the work, then it is it is more likely that eventually you guys might succeed in the end. But again, I, I don't... I just sense struggle with that. I think that I think you might even have a third crossroad with this person if you chose them later down the road where it's... Like, things will be kind of getting better, but then there's certain things, like certain issues, I feel, like, that are really important to you, they would not take seriously. Like, I don't know if you guys were together before, and there was, like, certain things that um, seemed like little things to them, but they seemed like really big things to you. And so I kind of see this really mixed energy where it's like there's they're still not taking some of those things seriously like they're still kind of screwing up in certain ways but then in other aspects they're doing well like maybe with communication issues they start doing better or they they try not to run off when they're scared or when you guys get in an argument they try to be more mindful and more spiritual and more patient with you um and more understanding and more empathetic i feel like they have a hard time with their empathy like they they don't they don't have I don't want to say they don't have a lot of empathy, but it's kind of like they don't acknowledge it as much as you do, or not in the same way, at least. So, I and so, yeah, I almost sense another crossroads down the road with this person, um, where it's, it's like, it's just, okay, like, all right, they're, they're doing this and this differently, and I'm proud of them for that, but this other issue still isn't being taken seriously after all this time. Do I want to keep doing this? You know what I mean? So it's just up to you to, to deal with it. Or, you know, it's the other, again, so many crossroads in this reading. Um, so then again, the other, and the other option is that you say, screw it, and you do leave, and you say, you know, I'm not doing this anymore. Um, and again, still, this is nine of wands. It's like struggles and obstacles, but, you know, most likely success in the end. So it's, it's a very, it's a card of strength and it's a card of emotion to me and, um, and just passion and perseverance, you know, which you, which you have, you're, you definitely persevere against all odds. Um, and so it's saying, even if you get closure, it's still going to be a struggle to, to heal from this pain and this heartbreak of having this person come back and having it, you know, like, I think it would give you closure, like, okay, this really is over, but it would still be kind of, it would kind of mess with your head. It was like, why, why? Why was that necessary? Why did that person come back just for, you know what I mean? Like, just for it to end like that. Like, just for that to happen again. But it would give you the closure that you need. Them coming back would give you the closure that you need to, like, really move on. Because I feel like maybe you didn't have that closure before. Like, you always wondered what could have been. And so, like, you would know. You know what I mean? You'd be like, okay, like, this is, I can't deal with this again. I'm not the same person, so I can't, I don't have the patience for that shit like I used to, you know? It's that kind of energy. So it's like, yeah, you have, it's it's going to be obstacles. There's going to be a lot to get through and, and some pain and heartache either way, no matter what you choose, unfortunately. Um, let me see 
really quickly what I can get off of this King of Pentacles energy because I I like this energy more. It feels like it's unfamiliar to you though. It's like it's not like you're kind of I don't know if you know this person or not yet, but it's almost like someone that you're kind of attracted to, but you're like like this is different. Like I don't know about this. Maybe maybe I don't know. <laughs> Is this going to be boring? Is this going to be like, what's going to happen with this? It's like this, that it's that kind of energy where there's just some uncertainty on your end. It's just really unfamiliar to you. But you know what? If you have a pattern with guys that are douchey, then unfamiliar is probably good. Like if you meet somebody and you just listen to your body's intuition and it's like you feel so safe and comfortable and just at home with them and you're, they just resonate with you on a soul level. You know what I mean? Like it is worth pursuing. So tell me, well, let's see, what do we need to know? What should the viewers, Gemini viewers, know about this King of Pentacles energy? Oh, I guess those ones want to come out. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right, let's see what we have. Seven of Swords. Four of Wands. Okay, that's interesting. <laughs> it's so interesting that with, like, the King of Cups, like, you got that energy, but the Four of Wands was reversed. That's so confusing. Okay, Queen of Pentacles. So that's a really good... That's good, because this is your King of Pentacles. So it's a more... Um, Ooh, Empress. Okay. So this is like a more balanced partnership than what you would have with the King of Cups. It's more like this person's your equal. You know what I mean? Queen of Swords. Ace of Wands. So that, it's interesting that that's reversed. It's almost like letting go, like the ending of another relationship, I guess, is what it would be saying. King of Swords. Okay, you have a lot of King energy here. I'm going to have to figure this out. <laughs> Six of Wands reversed. The Wheel reversed. Okay. <laughs> Interesting reading. Um, let me actually put all these away so that I can put these cards up for you guys and we can look at them together. I almost feel like this might be you running away from the person that hurt you um, and kind of it's like this person is almost like old reliable to you it's like they're there when nobody else is because they love you unconditionally um, and so yeah with this on the swords I almost feel like this is like the person you might want to call when this other person hurts you and it's like you're reminiscing about like the good times, the sweet environment, what it could be like. Um, let's see what else I can get from that. It's interesting though because it's like they're right in front of you with this person. You know what I mean? Like I feel better about this connection. But you might be bored with it as a problem and it sucks because I don't see any cups here. I was hoping we would get some cups because I'm like this person is so much more stable for you. Um, but I don't see any cups, but it's like you're in, you're going to feel confident. This is a more independent connection, which I think you're not fully used to because it's like not, it's not like as codependent as the other relationship is. It's like this person is going to be all about you and this person is going to just want to treat you like a queen and just give you everything. I sense a lot of financial stability. I kind of see like maybe they they might help you get ahead on like financially or like on your financial path with the Queen of Pentacles, um, almost like they might, like, support you while you're going to school or while you're doing, like, something of that. It's that kind of energy where it's, like, they, they're a provider type is what I feel. And you're in your Queen of Pentacles energy, you know what I mean? Like, you you see that, but it's, like, you, you hold the key. It's up to you what you want if this is enough for you. But you're, that's how they see you, though. They see you as the Queen of Pentacles and the Queen of Swords and also the Empress, and, um, you know, the Empress is just like a mother figure. This is like intuition. This is the goddess. This is, um, 
you know, she's just very spiritual and very divine and she's in her power. And so it's kind of like with this relationship, it's just very, how do I even describe that? It's like, it's a spiritual relationship and it's, there's the, there's the stability and there's this, this feeling of, of con, there's this connection there. How do I even describe that energy? It's so strange. Cause it's like, it's missing some, it's missing something at the same time. It's, oh, how do I describe that? It's sort of like a power couple kind of relationship where it's like, they think highly of you. They just, they put you up on this pedestal. Like they take care of you. They support you. You guys support each other. You're each other's rocks. Um, it's like it's a solid relationship. There's healthy communication in this relationship, I feel. There's open communication. But there's a level of, like, depth that's maybe not there as much as it is with the other person. Like, there's, like, a level of, like, raw emotion and passion that you might not have with this, this other person. But I feel like for some of you, it might be able to develop. It's really... It's up to you. It's up to you to follow your intuition. For some of you, I don't feel like it can develop. And for others, I feel like it might be able to. Um, I think it's just kind of about your ability to to date outside of your comfort zone and to be with somebody who is just so much more stable and so much more grounded and secure than what you're used to. You know what I mean? Like, can you, be, can you handle that? Can you handle that kind of new, intense energy? Um... But it, it is a stable relationship. There is clear, solid, strong communication here with, with this couple, I feel. Um, I just sense at times that you're kind of like used to the drama. So it's like it's a healthy relationship feels boring to you almost, if that makes sense. Um, and with the, the Queen of Swords energy, I think for one thing, well, actually, let me see. Let me see this. Let me see how these play out. I actually feel really good about this King of Pentacles because I'm looking at it. I'm trying to see what else I can get from this. And I'm, I'm kind of thinking that this is actually referring to your relationship with the King of Cups that we just mentioned earlier. And see how the Queen of Swords and the King of Cups are like looking away from each other. It's like, you know, Swords is it's one of the, I don't know if you'd call it a harsh suite in the, in the tarot deck, but I guess you could. It's It's kind of, it's it's, it's cutting, it's it's kind of intense, it's sharp, it's, um, you know, ego in a lot of ways, and it's like they're looking away from each other, they're not doing this anymore, and with the Ace of Wands reversed here, I kind of see it as like, it's like this this person is, you know, if you choose this path, if you choose to go with this other person, you're not going to want that anymore, you're not going to want your King of Cups anymore, that situation's, you know, reversed, it's dead, it's it's over if you choose that. Um and with the Queen of Swords and the King of Swords, I'm, I think it's kind of t like re referencing what you had with um, the King of Cups, actually, where it's like this this harsh, um, just codependent kind of hostile connection relationship that you guys have, and, and you're looking away from each other. And I feel like this might be um, like sulking, too, almost. Like maybe they, maybe you rub it in their face that you got a new man or something like that, that kind of energy, or they're rubbing it in your face that they've got someone new, um, and you guys are just kind of, like, looking away from each other, like, you're not, there's no closure that was had, I don't think, but it's like, you're just not doing it anymore, but this King of Pentacles puts you in your Queen of Pentacles Empress energy, so it's actually, even though it's unfamiliar, I feel like it's really good, because it's like, you're, you're just so much more grounded and solid and you're yourself more and you get to be this this kind of you know this this intuitive queen here um without being put down you know what i mean like this person i think is going to think very highly of you and they're going to put you up a lot um and and again with this this uh king of cups energy or sorry um yeah king of cups energy um, with the Six of Wands reversed, I feel like this is, so Six of Wands upright would be like public recognition and success. And so I think there's something to do with the public that might not be happening for them since it, this relationship is not happening, if that makes sense. Like they might not have the confidence to pursue, like you were kind of, their crutch in a way, and they might not have the confidence to pursue something they want to pursue without you. And with the wheel, it's like that. It's not turning anymore. It's done. It's over. It's cut out. 
Um, I do really want to quickly, just really quick, I want to get some more clarity on this King of Pentacles, though, because we went into the King of Cups a lot, but we didn't really go that deep into the King of Pentacles, even though I feel like that's probably, for most of you, that's probably your best option, I feel. But you know, you know what your situation is, you know what you feel, you know when to follow your heart, you know, you you're, you guys are intuitive, you know too. Um, and I do not intend to read these reverse. If they come out reverse, it's just because I need to reorganize them. So the King of Pentacles, can you tell me, can the passion develop? So it's this unfamiliar connection. It's stable. It's grounded. There's clear communication. It's healthy. But it's almost like it, you're almost bored in a sense. It's almost like, is this too good to be true? Is this too stable? Like, why why isn't this person, why aren't we yelling? Why, why are we communicating so well? It's, it's this strange, confusing energy. Um, so with this King of Pentacles, can the passion, like what would need to happen for the passion to develop? Like, is that possible? Can the passion develop? Success. Okay. So yes, the passion can develop high priestess of air, which is it's you, <laughs> you know, you're an air sign, um, you're a priestess too, it sounds like, and, and you, this is you communicating clearly and, and having the confidence, confidence in yourself to know that you deserve this kind of love, that you deserve this commitment, you know, not going back to old patterns, letting go of the past, letting go of the old patterns, letting go of the king of cups, letting go of, this is like, becoming a whole new person so it's kind of like whether you have this king of pentacles or not it's kind of like well are you willing to let go of everything you thought you knew are you willing to step out of your comfort zone to that extent are you willing to become a whole new person are you willing to to end all those toxic repeating patterns are you willing to just like let go of your um you, you know, your your ideals of, of what you think a soulmate should look like. Can you let go of that? And if you can, then yes, there is hope um, for that romance and that passion to be built on based on a solid, strong friendship and based on, again, though, you've got to break these familiar patterns. So it's, it's going to be kind of uncomfortable and strange new energy for you at first. Um, with the high priestess of fire here, I feel like this might be a fire sign that you're dating. I feel like it's also saying fire is in like passion, lust, seduction, you know, romance, love. It's like, yes, there is hope for that fire energy to um, to return. And this person is also going to be much more loyal to you than the King of Cups would be. So I hope that resonated with you guys. Please like, share, comment, subscribe. Um, I'm a new reader on YouTube, but relatively new. And when you, you know, comment and engage, it, it really, it helps, helps because um, YouTube promotes my content when you guys do that. So, so yeah, thank you guys for watching. Bye.